Working on this next story today really upset me. Some members of the University of Sydney encampment were reportedly members of an extreme Islamist group, Hizbut Tahrir, which is categorised as a terror organisation in the UK. The group held a press conference on Friday night in which they chanted Alu Akbar, the phrase that has been used as a battle cry at least 20 times. Have a look. Oh, It went on and on. And they were celebrating in that press conference. They were boasting because the University of Sydney had made a deal with that fringe group who will now be privy to the University of Sydney's defence and security related research activities online. And here they were boasting all about it. The Muslim encampment led by Sumsa is proudly the largest, most active and longest lasting part of the encampment. United factions we previously, we previously thought would never be united came together. We brought numbers to the front laws of the quadrangle we thought we'd never see outside of Erwick. It is the witnessing of such abhorrent crimes that ignited the flame of activism within us. And it is that flame that eventually led us to negotiate with the highest exec executives of this university, including the University of Sydney Vice Chancellor and President Mark Scott. They spoke about Islamophobia in that press conference, no mention of anti-Semitism. They spoke, as you just heard, about abhorrent atrocities, no mention of October 7 attacks. And there was rightful criticism today of the University of Sydney Vice Chancellor Mark Scott doing this deal with groups that are linked to his but Taria. The Strategic Analysis Australia Director Peter Jennings said this is yet another example of poor quality university leadership in Australia. The Shadow Home Affairs spokesman James Patterson said the deal was a pathetic capitulation, grossly irresponsible, and raises very real questions about whether the university can be relied on to conduct sensitive national security and defence research funded by taxpayers. Ray Hadley on 2GB also criticised it strongly on air today. The Muslim Students Association earlier on Friday said the defiance of the university orders to vacate had worked in their favour across many fronts, most particularly being the catalyst for negotiations with the uni. And the University of Sydney have hideously capitulated and done a deal with a group dominated by Hizbet Tahrir, an organisation prescribed as a terrorist organisation in much of the world, including the UK. As I said, in an earlier lifetime, Mark Scott would have been front and centre with a headdress on, screaming and yelling and waving placards. And as you'll recall, Mark Scott, in his previous role, was the head of the ABC. Now, that group itself, the Muslim Students Association, responded to claims on social media that it was linked to his Taria, but in its response, it didn't actually deny that some of their members were linked to his Taria. Have a look. And the relentless attack and flack from the mainstream media that were often clutching at straws to delegitimize any true efforts for Palestinian resistance. They tried to associate Hizbut Tahrir as a scapegoat to push a pro-Zionist agenda, with 60 Minutes directly saying that Sheikh Ibrahim Dabon is a hate preacher for calling for the end of Zionism. And there were other similar posts. Now, the University of Sydney needs to come out publicly and clearly explain if it has done a deal with an extremist group and what checks, if any, it took to make sure this wasn't the case? Or doesn't Mark Scott care if he's capitulated to a group where some of its members are part of his but Taria, classified as a terrorist organisation in other parts of the world? Well, it seems the university is more concerned with appeasing extremist fringe groups some of whose members have on social media denied that October 7 atrocities took place at all. And meanwhile, anti-Semitism surges. The university is an unsafe place for young Jewish students and the university leadership just turns the other way, doesn't care, doesn't return the phone calls of Jewish leaders. 
It's this inaction that is making life so unsafe for Australians, including Jews, who just want to get an education. Now, one person who has written a powerful piece against the lack of leadership we're seeing across the board is the former Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions for the Commonwealth, and he was also a member of the National Crime Authority, Mark Legrand. And he joins me live now. Mark, thank you very much for your time. Now, you've written an incredible piece in The Australian. You have shown leadership on this. You said, while this Jew hatred is accelerating and hurtling towards a disaster, there is scant leadership to combat it. And you've said that to avoid a future tragedy, Albanese must act with commitment, vigour and courage. What do you think the responsibility is here for the Prime Minister? Well, thank you, Shari. The Prime Minister's responsibility is clear. Under the Australian Constitution, he leads the government. And as Prime Minister, uh, he's required to deliver peace, order and good government. This part of good government is upholding the rule of law. The rule of law requires that uh, all our people be treated equally. And it's clear that he's failing in that duty. Yes, uh, this, since the uh, horrific events of the 7th of October mm. last year, uh, nine months have elapsed in which uh, there's been an accelerating abuse of the Jewish citizens of our country. They've suffered horrific abuse. They've suffered violence. They've suffered vandalism to their businesses. They've suffered being, having their children excluded from uh, university campuses. And effectively, nothing has been done. The government, beyond a few uh, platitudes, has done nothing. The police, state and federal, I'm not aware of any uh, substantial charges that have been laid in that time. And as a result, there's no deterrence. The activity is green-lighted and it continues and accelerates and becomes more serious. Um, unless something happens soon, some real tragedy is going to occur. And I'm not just speculating because mm. Australia's faced situations like this in the past. And, uh, for instance, with the uh, um, issue between the Croats and the Serbs in the uh, 60s, 70s. Mm. But then uh, leadership was given uh, mm. from uh, the Whitlam government and, uh, and uh, Attorney General uh, Murphy, who said, you do not bring your ancient hatreds to this country yes. and set about a strong and effective uh, program of law enforcement mm. to stamp it out. It took some time, but eventually that occurred. Mm. Very powerful response there. You're worried that a tragedy might happen. You say that we're seeing platitudes instead of any substantial policy action. Why do you think... I mean, you've been involved, Mark Legrand, in, in royal commissions, in senior investigative task forces. Why do you think we haven't seen law enforcement use the laws that are available to them to actually stop the violence that's being unleashed on our streets? It staggers me. I've worked with law enforcement in various capacities for four decades. And some of the finest people I've met and some of the most dedicated have been law enforcement officers. And I just can't understand how for the last nine months, effectively, not a finger has been lifted to pursue uh, the people who are perpetrating these actions against our Jewish Australians. 
the horrific hate preaching that's coming out of West, Western Sydney, it's clearly contrary to law, but nothing happens. Mm. Now, I've worked sufficiently closely with police from uh, police commissioners down to officers in the field to know that that is not their determination. They're not going to wholesalely decide not to enforce the criminal law. They're getting a message from up the line, from government, uh, through wow. the police minister, through the premier or, or through whoever is the senior public servant carrying the message that uh, they're not to action these laws. The police are not going to make that determination themselves. The police left to their own devices would wow. enforce the law. But um, it's, it's clear to me that and they'll deny it, they'll deny it vehemently and you won't find any record of it. It'll be verbally delivered. Mm. But I can assure you that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. and, and you ask why? Well, I can speculate as you can speculate, mm. but um, uh, I've heard uh, people speculate that it's because of the Muslim vote in, in certain electorates. Mm. I hope we're not, not become so venal that that's the case. I've heard that, uh, you know, it's the uh, whole mantra of the neo-Marxists of uh, oppress and oppressor flying from our universities. I don't know. Uh, I do know that there is a dark anti-Semitic side of the union movement, and that was mm. clear from the AC2U's statement on the 22nd of April mm. that was uh, uh, really quite scandalous in the way it was slandered against uh, what happened on the uh, 7th of October last mm. year and what happened since. But I can only speculate as you can only speculate. Uh, yeah, but, but still a powerful was a statement from you, I... you that, that you believe law enforcement yeah. would like to take action and there's been a, a, a message given to them <laughs> not to take action. Mark Legrand, just before you go, I, I want to ask you about, you know, what I spoke about in the introduction to your interview, the anti-Semitism on university campuses, how it's allowed to go unchecked, the capitulation to extremist groups. I mean, Mark, we have seen Iran and Hamas back in these university protesters globally. I mean, what do you think of the inaction from university leadership that, that we're seeing on this matter? Well, what I saw come out of Sydney University today is insane. Um, no, I withdraw that. Is sinister and it's treacherous. I mean, let's see what power you've given to people influenced by Hitzbut Taria, a declared terrorist organisations in other countries. Mm. Um, and as you say, um, the uh, support that... Uh, these protests are getting uh, from Hamas and the uh, greatest state sponsor of terrorism, Iran. Mm. Uh, and the agreement is that they'll be disclosing details of defence and security-related research and investments. One has to wonder what's happened to our country. This is just insane. Mm, mm, mm. It is indeed. Mark Legrand... Thank you for speaking out. Thank you for caring about this issue. That is uh, one of the best interviews, one of the, the strongest interventions in this public debate that I've seen um, from such a credible and highly regarded figure. Thank you very much for coming on this program tonight in this first interview. Really appreciate it. And I hope you will continue speaking out and that your colleagues will do the same. I hope so too. Thanks, uh, Shari.